Good afternoon, everyone. A home game for the Western Suburbs Magpies, and you don't get much further west than this. We're at Lathlane Park in Perth, Western Australia, where the Magpies take on the high-flying Melbourne Storm. Let's check on the two lineups. Good afternoon, Russell Fairfax. Yes, thanks, Johnny. Well, no changes to the fourth place Melbourne Storm side, but for the Magpies, just one change to their 17. Matthew Spence comes into the starting lineup. Michael Brabeck goes back to the bench. Sean Hampstead is the referee, and the Maggies are getting a whopping 20 and a half point start on Footy Tab. Thanks, Russell. Well, Melbourne are expected to win. They've been in terrific form. Steve Mortimer, if the Magpies are to cause an upset, who do they have to turn to? Well, I think they've got to look towards the uh, experienced guys, particularly in the forwards. Harvey Howard loves to take the ball up offload. Also, uh, Kevin McGuinness out there in the centres too. He is uh, a player that is very fast, got a great left foot side step as well. And then you go to the rookies too. A couple of fine rookies in form. Mick Brayback. He's not big in size, but I tell you what, he's big in heart. He will never give in all day, that fellow. And Justin Brooker, nice stepping um, uh, in, in the centre area too and also has got a great turn of pace. Well, Melbourne certainly start as favourites, but I'm sure the Magpies are going to take it right to them this afternoon here in Perth. The Magpies against the Storm at Lathlane Park. And the Melbourne dressing room, Melbourne wearing their reverse strip this afternoon. Good idea given that uh, the, the Western Suburbs side with their basically black with the white and of course Melbourne normally have their purple strip. So to avoid any confusion, Melbourne wearing their reverse strip this afternoon and just getting the last minute instructions there from uh, their coach, the Australian coach Chris Anderson. They've been out on the field, done quite an extensive warm-up for this game, whereas uh, by contrast, the Western Suburbs Magpies have remained confined within the within their dressing room. Terrific side, the Melbourne Storm this year. They've got very exciting backs and their forwards just about unstoppable, Steve. Oh, John, they are a wonderful side, Melbourne Storm, uh, coached by a, a great coach in Chris Anderson. Interesting that we're here in Perth, John. It's a little t interesting twist here where we've got four ex-Perth Red players, of course, one from uh, the Western Suburbs Magpies uh, playing. And uh, that's uh, Matthew Fuller in the, in the uh, second row. And, of course, we've got Matt Geyer. And also we've got the likes of Robbie Kearns and Rod Howe, former Perth Reds, playing for the Melbourne Storm. So there's the Western Suburb side down in the far end. A little bit of team bonding. <laughs> yes. Acceptable team bonding. <laughs> and getting the last-minute instructions from their coach, Tom Rodonikus. And they do have their supporters over here in the West. The Magpies, it's just about the youngest of them. Well, isn't it great? And perhaps group. one of the oldest. And it's not a bad crowd. There's a lot of expatriates too, and a lot of our New Zealanders over here in Perth too. And they've come here to watch a game of rugby league today. Uh, it looks like it's going to be threatening with rain, but the rain at this stage has held off, and I'm sure they're looking for a quality game of rugby league showcasing this great game over in the Western Australian capital city, Perth. The Melbourne Storm up on 12 points on the uh, the Premiership ladder and a side that I think is universally feared by all of the other teams in the combination. And uh, they, they just realised that when Melbourne hit their straps, then they're just about an unstoppable side and are going to get better, no doubt. Well, they've got a hardcore, you could call it, say, about 12, 13,000 people, Melburnians now, that follow the Storm. There's big Glenn Lazarus. He's been a great buy for the Melbourne Storm. It's going to be his last year. He'll certainly lead up front and, uh, and take them all the way through the game today. And the west side, just getting ready to come out onto uh, to Laughlane Park here in Perth. Daunting prospect it is for uh, for Wests. They've had just the one win, and that was against South Sydney. They're on six points in the ladder, but of course have already had their their two buys. And really, it is a great difference in size when you see Big Glenn Lazarus leading out this monster forward Ladies pack and that the Melbourne Storm possesses, the and the then Melbourne you see the Storm. lightweights from uh, from Wests, a couple of their uh, their big men, such as uh, Harvey Howard and John Skendalis, but a couple of very lightweight forwards as well, and they're really going to have to work hard today. Well, there's the Melbourne Storm uh, pack, absolutely huge up front with uh, Glenn Lazarus. Rodney Howe is in absolute wonderful form at the moment, and they're in a change. Danny Williams and, and uh, Kearney as well. Well, Kearney and Rua, both test players for New Zealand. Kearney, the test captain. What a bench to have. 
And the Western Suburbs Magpies led out by their captain, Steve Georgialis. And the West Side, just with the, the one change to the starting lineup with Matthew Spence into the, uh, the start and Michael Brabeck dropping back to the interchange bench. Coached by Tom Rodonikas. Yes, I tell you what, if all the players can have a little bit of that Tommy's Rodonikas spirit and, and guts, then I think they will go quite well, the Magpies today, because he was a great competitor in his day. Certainly was a great competitor. Very few fiercer competitors than Tom Rodonikas. Ladies and gentlemen. So now we pause here at Lath Lane Park in Perth for the national anthem to be sung by Sarah Baker. Australians, oh, let us rejoice. For we are young and free With golden soil and wealth for toil Our home is good by sea Our land abounds in nature's gifts Of beauty rich and rare In history's page let every stage Australia Fair In joyful strains Then let us sing Advance Australia Fair 14-year-old Sarah Baker Our referee this afternoon, Steve Emsted So all set for uh, this clash here in Perth The referee for this afternoon, Sean Hampstead controlling his 60th first grade game. The Melbourne Storm running from the city end, the, kicker, the Perth Stanley end Orning. of Lath Lane Park. The kickoff being taken by Brett Kamali as he does so. Let's take you down to the sideline just to check on weather conditions down there. Good afternoon again, Russell Fairfax. Well, I can tell you the ground is in superb condition. It's firm, it's good for football. There's a slight breeze blowing from left to right. Uh, well, I guess about a couple of points, that's about it, but I can tell you now, great conditions for football. And the, the ground itself, I guess, Russell, we have to thank one of the best-known names in rugby league for getting the ground in such good order. Yeah, former Western Suburbs National Teddy Goodwin was out here for the last couple of days marking this ground, and he donated his fee to the local football side, so local football association, so Teddy's still doing it for the game. Good on you, Lord Ted. West's in possession and Harvey Howard almost up to halfway and they're on the last in this first set and Leo Dinova to get his kick away. So it's been a good opening set for Western Suburbs. Just what Tommy Rodonikas would have wanted. Get through your first set and they did it well. A good set of six for Western Suburbs. Play simple, use the whole six uh, tackles and get it down the opponent's end and come in. Their tackles, they're pretty fired up, John. Well, they certainly have to be against this side. Rodney Howard taking it up the short side. Since he's been back into the Melbourne lineup, they haven't lost a game, the Melbourne Storm. To Wira Nikau, just short of the halfway mark. Wanting a quick play the ball. West's obviously wanting to hold them down as long as possible. And Robbie Kearns almost got that right arm free to unload. Ross getting it away to Kamali. Kamali's kick, putting it across field for Barry Davis. Not much of Barry Davis, but he's impressed me the last couple of weeks for Western Suburbs. He's a real goer, this young kid. Great work there, too, by Brett Kamali. Chased his own kick, and uh, chase these days is so important when you kick the ball down the field. Brett Hodgson playing the ball there. Good to see Brett Hodgson back into this game today. Of course, uh, last week he had to leave at half-time when he had an irregular heartbeat, and there was certainly some concern for him, but thank goodness everything is OK, and he's back into his number one position for the Magpies today, Brett Hodgson. Just outside their own 20. Justin Brooker trying to get on the outside of the Melbourne defence. Can't do so. Now to Leo Dinova. Dinova's kick, but put straight down to Robbie Ross. Ross able to get his pass to, to a Marcus By, then wrapping around By and inside for Tony Martin. Martin couldn't pick it up, but Scott Hill does so. Broke the first line, Scott Hill then will be taken by Hodgson almost on the 30. Some danger signs though for Western Suburbs. Back to Marcus Bay. 
George Alice making this tackle on him. Kamali just running it to the line and then just whipping that quick pass away to Robbie Kearns. Off the ground. First penalty going the way. And the first try, Matt Geyer going for the corner. Geyer getting it down in the corner as they just ran quickly to the short side from that first penalty. The referee is going to go to the video ref, who this afternoon is John Gosher. But Matthew Geyer, welcome return to Perth for Matt Geyer, was a member of the Perth Reds, and he and his Melbourne teammates very confident that he scored this first try. Geyer taking the ball back. He's going to start lining up his conversion attempt. From the quick tap, Kabali. Well, this is where the penalty, in fact, came. I think. Just keep working, Dan. It's all. It's all I ask, right? So the reason for the penalty, just not allowing Robbie Kearns to get to his feet to uh, to play the ball. The Western Suburbs Magpies also resigned to the fact that Matt Geyer has just scored, while the uh, the video referee John Gosher just wants to have a look at the uh, the replay of this try. Melbourne just catching West snapping, taking that very quick tap and then out to, uh, to Gaia. And Gaia for the corner. And on that angle, you would think he's had. I think the key there is John, was his hand. There's Brett McCauley running the ball down. Lovely wide pass to, to Matt Gaia. Yep. But his right That's hand, does it stay inside, inside that line? It looks, look, for mine, it looks okay. Certainly from that angle, it looks okay. And it'll be up to uh, to John Gosher, the video referee, to decide whether, in fact, his hand has just hit the touch-in goal line. But it hasn't. On the, that, you would think that he's got the ball down fairly. Yeah. I, I can see the uh, board for me. And try a signal. Sean Hampstead awards the try after video referee John Gosher gave it the nod. So the first points on the board for the Melbourne Matty, Storm Matty. and they lead by 4-0. to nil. And Matt Geyer to attempt his uh, conversion of his own try. Well, the Magpies, I thought, a little bit stiff there with that penalty. I think Robbie Kearns also sort of milked that penalty a little bit. But Brett Kamali, fine player, quick thinker between the years, took a quick tap, uh, found the Western Suburbs Magpies in, uh, laps and, of course, fired the ball out to Mark uh, to Matt Geyer. Well, that's hard to tell for me, uh, just to, everything apart from there. Yes, that's one of the areas that West are going to be on the back foot today. The big forwards from Melbourne, they hit the line so hard and then they're so quick at playing the ball and getting, getting that roll on. And they're a very hard side to stop when they get on a roll, regardless of who the opposition is. So Matt Geyer, been in good form this year so far, but that kick is going to be one that he'd rather forget about, kicking it across the face of goal. But Melbourne lead by four to nil in the fifth minute of play here at Lath Lane Park in Perth. Ground that is normally the home ground for the Perth Demons in the local Australian rules competition, the WAFL. It turned out in very good order for this NRL round 10 clash today. Brett Hodgson to restart for the Magpies. Taken by Robbie Ross. They bring it very quickly outside their own 10, Melbourne. Now to Nickow. Fuller coming over the top to put him to ground. Richard Swain getting away from dummy half. Held on to by Harvey Howard. I don't think Harvey Howard really could complain about that penalty going against him. Easy to understand what Harvey Howard's trying to do, but the, uh, the referee, Sean Hampstead, had absolutely no option but to penalise him on that occasion. Nothing going right for uh, the Magpies at the moment, but they've got to hang in. They've got to put the big blokes like Glenn Lazarus down on the ground. But watch Melbourne store. They'll hit it a few times up the middle, and they're trying to get Western Suburbs on this side of the field. Rodney Howard gets it 28 metres out from the line. Kamali over the top, knocked backwards by Western Suburbs. It'll be a Magpies ball. Wasn't knocked on. Eventually dived on by Barry Davis. 
Hodgson in traffic and put the ground in Kabali's tackle. Georgialis, the Magpie skipper. Now to Fuller. Again, coming back to a place where he spent a couple of successful seasons, Matt Fuller, but driven to ground by Paul Marquette in a good tackle. John Scandalis struggles to the halfway mark. Five tackles gone for the Magpies. Now back to Dinever, and they elect to run it on the last drop by Justin Brooker. Picked up immediately, though, by Melbourne. Aaron Mool put to ground. Eight metres inside West's territory. Lazarus back on the inside to Gaia. Howe. Almost up to the 30, Rodney Howe. Kamali taking it to the line. Then away to Ross, and the pass went forward. Luckily for West that it did go forward. Picked up, I think, by the touch judge who gave that call to, uh, to the referee. But had he not called it, and it was a correct call, let me tell you, but had he not called it, they were in dress of trouble. They certainly were, but the Magpies have got to make full value out of their sets of six tackles and get it down the other end. They ran the ball in the fifth and last tackle then, put themselves under pressure. They threw a bad ball, and Melbourne Storm just can't give them the opportunity to throw that ball around. One by Wests. Kevin McGuinness, 38 out from his own line, and this is Fuller. Dane Dorahy. Scandalous. Still a few metres inside his own territory. To Dinever and then away to Brooker, almost through. Dragged down from behind in a desperation tackle by Robbie Kearns. Now the kick by Dorahy. Barry Davis with a good chase. Robbie Ross going forward. Didn't get a good bounce. Robbie Ross eventually did well to clean it up. Terrific chase, though, by West to hold him down in the in goal. That's what they need, the Magpies. A little bit of that enthusiasm that was shown then by those chases to pin Robbie Ross in the in goal. Well, that was a great set of six for the Western Suburbs Magpies. Dane Dory put a lovely kick in there, and a kick is only as good as your chases. The Magpies are certainly coming back into this game. They really have lifted themselves. Yeah, just down the sideline, you can't doubt the Magpies' enthusiasm. You can see it, it's, it's there for one and all. But what's letting them down is those little fundamental things, coughing up the ball, that penalty by Harvey Howard. Just the little things they've got to get right now. Howard doing well to unload back to Cherry Mesher. Mesher is 18 metres out from the Melbourne line. The Storm lead by 4 to nil here in Perth. Fuller. George Arles. Dorahy. Dorahy wide to Matthew Spence. Spence doing well to unload back to John Scandalis. Ten metres out from the line and a penalty will come the Magpies' way. Reefed out by Melbourne. Stand up, stand up. Don't worry about the theatrics. Ken, just get up and play the ball. <laughs> well, well, he's got the penalty, but he's yep. got a little caution on the run as well from the referee. He certainly did. We saw the Melbourne Storm pick up a penalty and Brett Camorley taking a tap and ended up in a try. So... Rightfully so, the Melbourne store did interfere with the play of the ball there. The Magpies, they're putting together now a couple of sets of six and they're playing, not, not trying to play outside their own ability, but playing within their means, doing the simple things well. So John Scandalis gets the penalty, but if uh, the referee's to be believed, he needs to go back to <laughs> acting school. Just <laughs> didn't pull it off quite as he would have liked. But I guess he got the desired result and Brett Hodgson to try and put the Magpies on the board. Very hard to con the referees these days, John. To say that you were always over here, Steve. Successful by Brent Hodgson. So 4-2 it is in favour of Melbourne. Storm leading the Magpies by four points to two in the 11th minute. Here in Perth on a, a cloudy afternoon. Thank goodness that wind, even though it is uh, still fairly windy, but drop from from what it was over the last 12 hours uh, last night in Perth it was a particularly gusty wind which would have been uh, just almost about impossible to play in but it has dropped a little since lunchtime this afternoon and here's a mistake now by Western Suburbs to lose the ball cold on the first tackle 
and this gives Melbourne the chance to feed a scrum only 22 metres out from the line. Possession is nine tenths of the law, and I was interested to see if they could hold that ball for the six and get it down the other end. We're seeing the errors, both sides got errors, but hit a capital idea, capital opportunity for the Melbourne Storm. 20 metres out, but they've turned the ball up as Six well. Six to go. It was knocked down by Brett Hodgson, dived on by Robbie Ross. The tackle count restarting. Now to Rodney Howe. Takes it inside the 20 of Western Suburbs. Swain is the dummy. Half his pass to Nickow. To Weir and Nickow. Drives it to 10 metres out. Played back again to Swain. Gives it away now to Robbie Kearns. Kearns pushing over the top of Leo Dinova. Kamali, Kamali cutting it back on the inside and almost getting through. Played back quickly to Kamali once more. On the last, slips away from one, two tackles, then throws a pass which was intended for Aaron Moore. Had he taken it, he was unmarked. Couldn't take it and over the touchline. Great defence there by Western Suburbs. They came up on the right-hand side. They really forced Brett McCormley to go back in and he threw a wild, wild pass. No one out there, so West, great defence. Matthew Spence showed a clean pair of heels last week in the, uh, the game against Canterbury to score a 75-metre try. Well, Johnny McCoy, one of the first of the replacements on. Glenn Lazarus is off. He's been replaced by another international in Stephen Kearney. Shows the power of Melbourne at the moment when you can take off Glenn Lazarus and you bring on a test captain and one of the best second rowers in the world in Stephen Kearney. George Arts able to unload to Dane Dorohy. Back to Mesha. Mesha able to get his pass away to McGuinness. Good step by McGuinness. Gets to halfway. It was Hill who chased him with Kearney to make the tackle. Dinova. Switch back on the inside to Michael Brabeck. Dinova again. Out to Matt Geyer. Turn back to Robbie Ross. Tackle by Justin Brooker. Now to Aaron Moore. Ten metres on his own side of halfway Moore. Marcus Bay hasn't really had a chance to be involved in this game so far this afternoon and loses the ball, Marcus Bay. Well, I'll tell you what, John, the Magpies have come here to play a lot of good football today. Their defence has been a lot better. They've created a few... Errors, uh, Melbourne have created a few errors and now the Western Suburbs got a great opportunity. Justin Brooker, Brooker getting away, he gets to Robbie Ross, he's got support on the outside, able to give it back into Jared Mills. Mills has pulled the ground only five metres out from the line. Up the short side goes Justin Brooker, only centimetres from scoring, back to Mills. This is Dorohy with it. Dorohy in traffic and the little fellow is put to ground. Last coming up now for Wests. Five metres out from the line. Call for by Leo Dinova. Dinova's little grubber kick comes off. A Melbourne player dived on by the Storm. And Robbie Kearns comes up with it. Great work there by Justin Brooker. He's made about three busts now. I thought he could have probably given the ball there on the left-hand side. But the Western Suburbs, Magpies, as I said before, they really have improved their performances and have come into play. Yeah, I suppose you have to give credit to the Melbourne defence, but I do think he blew that Justin Brooker. He had support on the outside in Jared Mills and just missed time when he should have thrown the pass to him. Had he timed it right, Mills was in untouched. It's interesting now the Melbourne Storm have got the ball and Stephen Kearney's come on. He's a great exponent of offloading the ball, just like Robbie Kearns is. So you're going to have to put the ball carrier down on the ground and dominate in defence. Scott Hill put to ground. Back to Kamali on the last, his kick. Sending Brett Hodgson across field to pick it up. Back inside his own 20, Hodgson. The Storm leading by 4-2 to two over the Magpies. Good run by Hodgson. Now slips as he runs into the tackle of Kamali. Dale Bonner off the interchange bench, loses the ball. Kamali comes up with it. Jeez, I've only seen one other bloke that could do that in yesteryear. That was Terry Lamb. And now we see a penalty going to the Melbourne Storm. Kick it back, kick it back, Lamb. Just coming up yep. too early, encroaching yep. inside the yep. 10 metres. Gee, it's not hard to work out the Melbourne Storm's tactics. They're just taking a couple up, they're trying to get the forwards. Their big yeah. forwards are hitting it up, and then they're going wide about the third and fourth tackle, yep. hoping some space coming out on, wide. Guys, Very close to cracking the, uh, the Maggies out wide. And this kick, a mistake being made by Hill, not finding touch, and Jared Mills comes up with it. 
Dale Bonner. Bonner just outside of his own 20. Dorahy, then away to Fuller. Dane Dorahy, son of course of John Dorahy, he's on the coaching staff at Western Suburbs. And see a report from England where Dorahy is being chased by a couple of clubs in England and is keen apparently himself to play in England next year. But to be eligible, he has to play 12 NRL games this season. So he'll be keen to stay in first grade. This is Spence. Matthew Spence, that pass went forward to Dale Bonner. Referee picked it up. Much to the disgust of the crowd, who I... Well, probably being Western Australians, they uh, aren't all that enamoured with the Victorians, and they're certainly behind the uh, the Maggies, but that pass did go forward. Just a little bit forward, but, geez, they're playing some enter enterprising football. I think Melbourne, right, Melbourne. Storm have just shown the, com the, there, the complete insult by not kicking for goal. They, they obviously don't rate the Melbourne... Uh, 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 sorry, the Western Suburbs Magpies in their defence, but they didn't kick the ball out, and now they're paying the consequences. Scrum win to Melbourne. Hill coming back into traffic. He got around Spence, gets around to second, then will be held on to in the tackle of Dorahy. Good run. Scott Hill to play it. Quickly to Swain, then away to Howe and on to Matt Rua. Rua taking it right on the advantage line. Gets to just 11 metres out from the line. Swain, then across field to Kamali, back on the inside to Kearns. Put on the ground to be picked up again by Robbie Ross. Ross five metres out, Fuller makes the tackle on him. Now to Stephen Kearney, hard to stop, so close to the line. Good tackle, Skandalis though, to come up quickly and put him to ground. Scotty Hill, switch back brilliantly on the inside, but the, the uh, defence of the Magpies holds. Last coming up, back to Kamali. Kamali will go to the air. Matt Geyer up above the pack, takes it straight out of the clutches of Jared Mills and try number two to Matt Geyer. It was a one-on-one -on -one contest, Jared Mills against Matt Geyer, but it ended up being no contest. Matt Geyer, the skills that some of the AFL supporters here would have been proud of in Perth. Good take by Matt Geyer, his second try, and it's 8-2 in favour of the Storm. Well, congratulations to the Melbourne Storm. Here we see Brett Kamali putting the ball up high enough. Matt, Maguire, uh, Matt Geyer is on side, up Aussie Rules style, over the top there, and, well, it's a four-pointer. Yeah, this is great vision by Kamali. Simple one-on-one -on -one play out there. And, of course, Matt Guy just gets up higher. And that is uh, Guy's 100th point for the season. Well done, Matthew Guy. Lived for, for so long in the shadow of his uh, more famous brother, Mark Guy, but now really making his mark on his own ability. Well, he's a key man. He's the goal kicker as well. And we just saw he's got 63%. And I'm sure he'd be interested to get that a little bit higher. But here he is now shooting for goal. He missed one previously off his own try. Can he convert this one? The wind coming virtually straight across from behind him, making it difficult just to judge this kick. Hits the upright. Bounces back in. He's getting closer, though. So here's that try again, Brett Kamali putting it high and a good take here by Gaia. Lovely placed kick there by Brett Kamali. Matt Gaia, you've got to catch it, but Brett Kamali, you know, he's got all the skills and that was a lovely, well-placed kick. I guess to, uh, to use Australian rules parlance, Jared Mills was in the good position. He was the one in front for taking the mark, but Matt Gaia up behind him, up there, Matt Gaia. I put that down to probably Greg Brentnell, who's their trainer too, a former Aussie Wills player, played with Canterbury. He's probably given him some little um, skills on how to get up above that man, John. So Melbourne out to a converted try lead of eight points to two over the Magpies. Good hard hit forward by Robbie Kearns. Tackle made by Harvey Hart. Then a quick play the ball and Mark Kitt. 15 inside his own territory. Now to Rua. Just starting to lift their intensity a little, Melbourne. Maybe the word went out from Chris Anderson that they were being a little complacent earlier on and taking things a little too easy. But they just seem to have lifted their intensity, particularly from when that try's been scored by Matt Geyer. Very important that the Magpies hold the ball for the full set of six here and get the ball down the other end and try to win that play the ball. Fight to get up to play that ball quickly to give your attacking men the opportunity to dart from dummy half or one out. 
Still inside their own 20. Fuller to play it. Jared Mills. Out of dummy half. Scampers some 12 metres. Now back to Harvey Howard. And the Englishman does well to unload a good pass to Mills. And then away through George Arles and out to Brooker. He's got too much pace for Rua. Gets to Robbie Ross. Oh, great covering tackle by the Melbourne Storm fullback. Well done, Robbie Ross. But he's having a good game, Justin Brooker. Now away to Dorothy. They're on the last and running it. Back to Dinova. Dinova's kick. Putting it back across field. Again, Robbie Ross having made that tackle is back there in the last line of defence. Well, Robbie Ross is everywhere there. The Magpies, a good set of six there, but now the Melbourne Storm. You'll find they'll play the ball quickly and get it out. Well, he lost that Aaron Mool, and the referee will see that accordingly. Not ripped out, just lost it cold. So here's an attacking opportunity for the Magpies. They're only 15 out from the line. Well, there was a hand in there after all. I take it all back. Steve Georgialis, he did lose it cold but George Arles helped him along. A real chance for Western Suburbs. Probably their best field position with a set of six right up their sleeve. And they camped on the 22. Trapped at the back of the scrum by George Arles. Now away through Dinova. Hodson. McGuinness. On the 20 of Melbourne. Hodson. Runs to the blind side. He just got isolated because the winger, Barry Davis, didn't realise he was going to run that way and didn't come up in support. Howard giving it back to McGuinness. Loses the ball. Scott Hill will struggle for it and get it. Melbourne ball. Well, Harvey Howard must be shaking his head. Is there key Lynch player in the Magpies? He then took, took about three or four Melbourne Storm defenders on, offload the ball, goes back to McGuinness and they drop the ball. You can't afford to do that. You need the ball to score the tries, boys. We've just got to wonder what their game plan is, Turvey. You know, there was no... there was looked like there was no semblance of a game plan there. They've got to be working towards something, and I couldn't see a thing then. Kamali getting under a highish tackle from Dane Dorohy, his opposite halfback. Swain. 40 metres out from the Magpies line, and on the last back to Kamali. Into the, uh, the strong breeze. The breeze coming across the ground, just holding that kick up, and it was well judged by Barry Davis. Great take under pressure there, John. Jared Mills, the other winger, coming across from the left-hand side to take this hit up. Now to Vita Ramon, just into the game off the interchange bench. Mesha. Out of dummy half, picking up the runner in Matt Fuller. 8-2 it is in favour of Melbourne. Amon again, the fresh man, takes the second hit up in this set of six. Final tackle, Dinova's kick down to Marcus By. Judged it well. By elects to take them on himself, then gives it to Tony Martin. I don't think it was supposed to go to Tony I don't, Martin. I don't think Tony Martin expected that at all, but he did well to take it. <laughs> he got in the way. <laughs> Robbie Ross. The play on, anyway. Just short of halfway. Lazarus back into the fray for Melbourne. Kearney. Go on, you come in. Go on, the offside and you come in. Penalty goes the way of Melbourne. I'll tell you what, some of these smaller magpies forwards they'll know they've been in a game tonight because they're just relentless melbourne one of them takes a breather like lazarus you get a kearney come on and they're just coming at you the whole time well the magpies aren't giving in but a good man will always beat a, a good big man will always beat a good little man at the moment the melbourne storm just what two meters out they really are firing up particularly their, their big men like the glenn lazarus of the world swain trying to burrow his way through the ruck only centimeters short of the line Played back to Kamali, now to Lazarus. They have to defend desperately here, the Magpies. They can't allow them to get in again. Here's Stephen Kearney. Put another try on the board, and it's going to be very hard for the Magpies to get back into the game. And this is going to make it harder still. Raked out is the ruling. So another set of six coming up for Melbourne. This penalty only five out from the Magpies line. Stephen Kearney there. Look, uh, he almost lost that ball. It's a very contentious issue, that. Melbourne. 
Inside the 10 of the Maggies, Marcus Bai in to be the dummy half. Danny Williams onto the field, goes in to be the dummy half now for Melbourne. Kamali switching it back to Rua. Ball and all tackle from Scandalis was too high. Come here, step one step up, righto. You ready to go over here, Steve? Righto. You, you. Tackle from John just Scandalis. Just keep the tackles down, right? Right. Sure. Too high the tackle from Scandalis, up around the, the neck area. That brings the penalty. Now what do they do, Melbourne? Do they have a shot at goal? Because they're right in front. It's a gift two points. Danny Williams signals to the referee they will have a shot at goal. What, what Steve said or what I said. So here we see the replay. Yes, it was high. I don't think it was all that bad, John McCoy. But, um, you know, Sean Hampstead there. It was high and deserved a penalty, and that's all it deserves. But it is a gift two points for, uh, for Matt Geyer from in front. I suppose, really, from the point of view of Western Suburbs, maybe better to just give away two, because there was every, every possibility that their line was going to be breached in the next set of six, and they were looking at at least four and probably six points. So two from the Magpies' point of view might be the, the better of two evils. There's the kick by Matt Geyer, successful. And the Storm lead by 10 points to two. And this match coming to you from Lathlane Park in Perth. Obviously, the Melbourne Storm um, do rate the Western Suburbs' defence. Um, they had two opportunities to kick for goal before, and they were right in front, so really they were mad not to take it. That means now Western Suburbs have to score a converted try and score again. They've got an eight-point lead at the moment, the Storm. Interesting just to hear those comments from Sean Hampstead to Steve Georgialis, the captain of Western Suburbs, because the Magpies are obviously becoming just a little frustrated. And Hampstead, as they were bringing that ball back for the kickoff, telling Steve Georgialis to talk to his troops and settle them down a little bit. Well, I hope the referee knows it's two-way traffic out there too, and not just penalty uh, Western Suburbs uh, magpies. Lazarus, just on his own 30, playing the ball. Rua, crossing the 30. A little Michael Brabeck. Is there a smaller second rower? Now, has there been a smaller second row than Michael Brabeck? He's got a big He's a paperweight. He's got a big ticker, though, hasn't he? He has got a big ticker. But the point is, as we said before, yeah. Steve, that the big men from Melbourne, they're going to grind you down when, when you're giving away that much weight difference. Well, you can see that the Melbourne are winning the play-the-ball battle. In modern rugby league, you've got to get up and play that ball quickly. Ball will go to Kamali. He'll try to find good field position. So the kick going down to Brett Hodgson. Positioned himself well to take it. Scotty Hill leads the chase to put the Magpies full back to ground. McGuinness. Driven back by Bowden. Here is Brabeck. To Dinova. Then away to Scandalis. To Hodgson. Gives his pass to Barry Davis. Kearney makes the tackle on Davis. Harvey Howard. That's his ninth hit up of the game. He's had nine hit ups and five offloads so far, the Englishman. Dorothy. Ten metres inside Melbourne's territory. Dinova kicking on the final tackle. Ross will let this bounce over the dead ball line. Back to the 20 for the tap restart by Melbourne. John Harvey Howard has probably been the Western Suburbs Magpies best forward, but he's going one out. There's no one supporting him because he can offload that ball. He's just doing it one out. And I think the Western Suburbs Magpie forwards are just tiring a little bit as, as the first half goes on. Well, as we said, it's, it's just the fact that Melbourne is so big. Eventually, something's got to give. They've got to wear you down. Here it goes again. Lazarus with that constant drive forward. They take the ball right on the advantage line. Back to Tony Martin. That's their real strength. A quick play the ball. Every forward is big. Every forward is strong. And they've got speed. And they hit the advantage line. And invariably, they're going to get through somewhere. Scott Hill looking for a runner coming straight. 
Here's the last. Kabuli with the little jig kick. Marcus by chasing through. Taken in the in goal by Barry Davis. Good take. Back to the 20 for the restart for uh, the Western Suburbs. Magpies. Great, great scrambling there by Western Suburbs Magpies, and they put the pressure on Brett Kamali. He got, he got the, uh, the kick away, wasn't a good kick, and now the Magpies can bring it out from their own 20 metre line. Georgialis to Fuller. Fuller on the 30 of Wests. Dorothy back to Skandarvis. In the modern game of rugby league, the key is to win that play the ball battle. And Russell, you can see that the, that the Western Suburbs Magpies are playing the ball one or two seconds slower than the Melbourne Storm. You're dead right, Turvey. That, that's the key for the Mag. For, for the Melbourne Storm, they're playing it quick. Magpies are slow to regroup in defence. That's one thing they've got to do. They've got to turn around and get the position quicker. And that'll help them. They're not doing it lining up or when they're playing the ball. Dorothy picking up that loose ball, then drops the ball himself, much to his disgust. There's those little errors I spoke about. Just those minor errors are really effective. If they can hold the football, they do a lot better. It was almost through, but to no avail. Knock on. Nice little dart there by Dane Dory, son of the great John Dory. Yeah, I guess that's the, the point that both Steve Mortimer and, and Russell Fairfax have made. When you are giving away such an advantage, you have to make sure of, of your set of six and ball security and use up every advantage you've got. The more you turn it over, the more trouble you're going to be in against a side like Melbourne. Well, where there's so much try scoring potential in the Melbourne Storm side, you've got to sort of starve them off the ball. And by making mistakes like that, you're giving them opportunities to exploit their skills again. Lazarus, again right on the advantage line, and then picking up Matt Rua. Rua was desperately trying to get his pass away to Robbie Ross. He was into open space, had the pass gone to him. Kamali takes it quickly, and an intercept is going to be taken by McGuinness. No one in front of him. Matt Geyer coming flying across from the other side of the field, but McGuinness will have too much speed and scores. Against the run of play, Kevin McGuinness runs away to score the try for the Magpies that puts them back into the game at 10-6. And we've got a game on our hands, John. It's Western Suburbs need a little bit of luck. Well, had he, if he hadn't have taken that intercept, it was a Melbourne try at the other end of the ground. Well, there they are, Brett Kamali threw the ball flat. Kevin McGuinness out there. He's got a bit of pace. But just one little small criticism. I felt that, he, felt that he could have improved his position there to help his goal kicker. Um, hopefully get it make four points into six points. There's the pass. McGuinness was waiting there and Turvey, there's your answer about a small man and a big man. Don't count the Maggies out, even though they've got a couple of small boys. Away goes Kevin McGuinness. They're back in this. I agree with though, Turvey. Could have gone round and planted that one under the dot would have made it a lot easier for the kicker. Perhaps the reason he didn't, he was able to see Matt Geyer racing from the other side of the field and I think the Thing that was foremost in his mind was to get it over the line and make sure the guy didn't get to him, which is fair enough, of course. Uh, most but now, Brett Hodgson 15 meters in from touch on this, the western side of the field. And for this kick, the breeze is coming straight across the ground, virtually blowing straight down that, that 20 meter line that you can see. to get them back within two. Hoping that the breeze might have blown that back in, but not to be. So 10-6 it is, five minutes before the break. The storm in front. Probably most would have expected them to be in front by more, but that intercept try will give the Magpies a little bit of heart. Terribly important to convert four points into six, John, particularly when you come around to the business end of the season, September time. Again, offloaded by Harvey Howard. The try scorer McGuinness to play it on his own 20. Scandalous. Eventually pulled aground by Robbie Kearns. Dropped by Brett Hodgson. Melbourne ball. Good attacking position for Melbourne. 30 metres out. Here's Marcus By. That's almost suicide. You can't drop the ball in the second or third tackle and give this side, Melbourne Storm, 
great opportunities to, to score. There's Big Glenn Lazarus, three or four guys to pull that big fella down. Nickow. This time Skandalis up quickly and a fight on now between Nickow and Skandalis and they are into it. Stand up, Steve. Stand up, Steve. Stand up, Steve. Stand up, Steve. I've got a tee. I've got a tee. I've got a tee. Is that right, fellas? Stand away. Stand away. Stand So, John Skandalis and Tawira Nickow, the two players being right, called out. What I want you to do, when you face the punch, you stand up. Let me hear right, you. Right, right, okay, right. Right, you are going to the bench. See you oh. later. So, right, Elbow, when you get tackled. See you later. So, an instigation. There we go. The instigation. Let So John Scandalis goes to the sin bin. Jeez, I tell you what, what, what didn't uh, didn't Stephen Kearney throw or Tewira to to Nicky? Did he throw any punches there? Take a look at this. There's one. There's a couple. Well, George Arles went up to the referee and complained that it was an elbow from Tewira Nickow that started it. That's not the way the referee saw it. He believed that Scandalis was the instigator. So consequently, Nick R stays on the field. Melbourne get the penalty. And the Magpies are a man short for 10 minutes. It's interesting that they're kicking for goal here. West have only got 12 men down there, John. And twice they've had the opportunity to kick for goal, but they've kick, uh, elected to kick for touch. So obviously they rate the Western Suburbs Magpies defence in this first half. Matt Geyer, his first kick from the left-hand side of the field. Again, the breeze blowing straight across the ground. So he's kicking virtually into this breeze and strikes it well. <laughs> Penalty goal by Matt Geyer and Melbourne lead West by 12 to 6, two minutes out from the halftime break. Well, we've got a game on our hand. Like it can still go either way. The Melbourne Storm should probably be expected to be further than that, but. The Western Suburbs Magpies are hanging in there. And it's interesting to see now what Melbourne Storm will do in this set of six. But watch when they take the ball up. The big men go on their front, on their knees, and quickly get up and play the ball quickly. In, and the likes of the dummy half, that Richard Swain, darts quickly from the dummy half area. Yeah, I, I can tell you what that send-off, Tommy's half-time speech will be a beauty. <laughs> <laughs> Most of Tommy's half-time speeches, I think, are beauties, but this one more so. Rodney Howe, that's his 10th hit up of the game. From Melbourne's point of view, uh, from uh, West's point of view, they will miss Scandalis for 10 minutes because he is one of their bigger men. And with he and Harvey Howe, they're the two that are able to match it for, uh, for size with the Melbourne forwards. They'll miss him for 10 minutes in the bin. Exactly, and what's the likes of little Brett Kamali? He'll look to see if the Western Suburbs Magpies drop back and throw the ball wide or he might kick for field position. On the last, Kamali getting near halfway, runs it on the last, Kamali into traffic, then got it away to Moore. Aaron Moore has got plenty of speed, going himself Aaron Moore, but ran out of support as the Magpies defence got to him with Dinover and Hodgson and they pull him to ground on the last and a changeover. Great defence there by Brett Hodgson. They had three men there, the Melbourne Storm, but Brett Hodgson stopped the really what was a dead set certain try. The Magpies, they are typifying the little Aussie battler in this team. Fuller, a dive pass, <laughs> eventually takes it. Second slip. Absolutely. <laughs> Hodgson, 15 on his own side of halfway. George Arliss, been a frustrating first half for the Magpies captain. <laughs> Cherry Mesher, and a penalty comes west to eight. So inside the last 30 seconds of the first half, Mesha back to Fuller, pops the pass up for the West's try scorer, McGuinness. It's important they get full value out of their five set, five tackles now. Harvey Hart can't offload this time. Good ball and all tackle by Danny Williams. Fuller runs it to the line, gives it wide to Brooker. Brooker, who's had a terrific first half, dragged to ground only five metres out. Plays the ball back, 
George Arles trying to put the ball on the toe. It goes over the line, and that is half time. And Melbourne, after an entertaining first half, lead the Magpies by 12 points to six. Melbourne 12, Western Suburb 6. Half time score at Lathlane Park in Perth. And the half time score here in Perth. Melbourne in front of Western Suburbs by 12 points to six. The Magpies, they're courageous, if, uh, if nothing else. They've certainly been outplayed as far as the, the overall skill level is concerned. I don't think many people would disagree with that. And they're certainly being outpointed on the, uh, the score of size. But they've got great hearts, the Magpies. And they're certainly not giving in. And that try to Kevin McGuinness, that intercept try, just a couple of minutes before uh, half time, certainly would have given them a lot of heart. But they will have to do it tough without John Scandalis for the first few minutes of the second half. He was sent from the field after this skirmish. Now, West believed that, yes, it was an elbow by Nickow which started it. The referee, Sean Hampstead, didn't see it that way. He believes that Scandalis was the instigator. And as a result of that skirmish, the penalty went the way of Melbourne, from which they got two points. And John Scandalis, the Western Suburbs prop forward, found himself sent to the sin bin. So West's down to 12 men for the uh, opening eight minutes of the second half. Glenn Lazarus bringing out his Melbourne Storm. Please welcome back to the ground, the Melbourne Storm. And now Leo Dinova first out for the Magpies, followed out by the skipper, Steve Georgialis. Tom Radonikus would have had plenty to say, no doubt, during that, uh, that half-time break. And you could just see the, the frustration on some of the West players, most notably their captain, Steve Georgialis. And in fact, he goes straight up now to have a talk with the referee, Sean Hampstead, as they come back out onto the field. He went straight across to, uh, to Hampstead. There's the two of them. Hampstead doesn't well, want to have to say much. Well, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, he was frustrated with some of the rulings, and no doubt that would be an instruction from Tom Rodonikus to go to the referee and just make known what their grievances are. Sean Hampstead didn't have much to say, but uh, he's got the message, no doubt. I've got to say, I think he's a little bit, been a little bit harsher on the Western Suburbs Mag prizes compared to the Storm, but nevertheless, he is the captain. He's allowed to ask the referee and set the scene, hopefully, for what will be a good second half. So they are a man short, Western Suburbs. Scandalous in the sin bin. For the first eight minutes of the second half, can Melbourne capitalise on that uh, distinct advantage that they have? Wests without one of their big men, and they need them all against the power of Melbourne, who are such a, a thoroughly professional side. I can tell you, Tommy made mention of that in the, in the uh, half-time uh, changeover. He said uh, for the next six minutes, while we were without Scandalis, you've got to just hang in there. He's pretty happy with the way they're going. For the second half, he just wants them to do two things. Hold the ball and don't be afraid to attack. Kamali using the kick straight to Hodgson. And Steve Mortimer, when you are in this position, you are a man short and you've, you're losing the power that one of your really big men brings against a big pack like Melbourne, what you have to do when you have the ball, keep it for six, use up as much time, slow down the play of the balls, use up every possible second you can when you've got possession. Very much so. You've got to hold it for six. And as Russell Fairfax said, if they can hold it, hold their ball and get full completion out of their sets of six, they're going to be right into this game because the Magpies aren't giving in. And, and their opportunities are out there. They're piercing them sometimes a little bit wide of the rut. But I'll tell you what, it's pretty testy out there too, John. Now, this is a high tackle by Kamali. This a penalty will go to Wests. Kamali, the offender for the high tackle. You want to carry on like that? I had the high shot. There's no need for you to carry on like that, right? I know you got hit, I know you got hit high. Don't count it. Stand away. Michael Brabeck, the player that uh, from Wests that was hit in the high shot. Yeah, I know. Set him high, right? Set him high. Just keep him down, Here it is again. Wasn't bad, but was high enough for a penalty. I think a similar one to uh, when yep. West were penalised in the first half. 
no malice in it, but it was a high shot and the penalty sufficient. So West get the penalty. Fuller, 40 metres out from the Melbourne line. Dinova to Howard. Interesting to see uh, they're running Harvey Howard two out now rather than close to the ruck, so hopefully they're, they're looking at penetrating the defence a little bit wider. Brooker. He's had the better of Aaron Mill during the uh, the first half. Brooker, the left centre for uh, for the Magpies. And Mool playing the right centre for uh, for Melbourne. Dinova able to unload his pass. The moment it was taken, though, by Brabeck, he was put to ground. Back to Dinova, then to Hodgson, now on to McGuinness. McGuinness throws it wide to Barry Davis. Inside hill, almost over the line. Good tackle by Tony Martin, right on the line for Melbourne. They're on the last now, Wests. Dinova chips over the top of the line. Was he knocked over in back play? The referee had a good look at it and said no, even though he was put to ground. The referee ruled there was no illegality as far as Melbourne were concerned. So a let off for the storm and here's Swain. Here's Dinova again. Well, I'll tell you what, I thought there should have been a penalty there. Well, you would think that Glenn Lazarus certainly has changed direction, but it comes back to Jared Mills. Mills gets to 10 metres out from the line and is tackled by Gaia. You wouldn't think at the moment, West with the side playing a man short, his Cherry Mesher, only five metres out. Georgialis, away to Howard, then to Georgialis. Wide pass, picked up on the bounce by Fuller out in the centres. Dinover again, running it to the line, switching it to Brabeck, got under a... Fairly high tackle from Rodney Howe. He's 10 metres out from the line. Dinova to Fuller. Then away to Spence. Spence, it's gone past Brooker. Also went over the head of Jared Mills with the try line wide open. Oh, Western Suburbs. A try gone being. Great ball there by Leo Dinova. Another great ball, but this one here, too hard, too hard. And I just can't execute their final movement well two players had the chance to take it brooker and jared mills either of them takes it and it's a try but none of them could get it the ball was too hard though he was just next door there john he threw the ball too hard robbie ross taking the first tackle after the melbourne scrum win 11 out from the melbourne line the storm lead by 12 to 6. west still with john scandalis in the sin bin Paul Marquette, good driving forward, but loses the ball. Picked up then, away to Fuller. This is Matthew Spence. Spence looking for a runner. That runner is Dinova. Dinova's pass is intercepted by Matt Geyer. Geyer caught by Dinova, made to lose the ball. The Magpies get it back, and this is Mills. Jared Mills looking to link up out wide. He may not need anybody to link up with. He almost got through. Tony Martin, a desperation tackle. Here's Howard. The big fella charges at the 20 out. Does well to give it back to McGuinness. McGuinness in traffic. Still looking to get the pass away. Now taken to ground. 15 from the line. They're going to hold the ball and not panic, John. Without four tackles up their sleeves. George Alice inside to Spence. Spence 12 metres out. Tackle low by Robbie Kearns. Dinova. No one running on the inside, has to throw a wide pass. This is McGuinness. That was a mistake by Wests. The pass was to go back on the inside and no one was running there to take it. Dale Bonner. Bonner losing the ball. This will be a Melbourne possession. Glenn Lazarus will come up with it. So the Storm weather the Storm and play at 12 from their own line. Well, both coaches are going to send their trainers out as Mark Boy takes the ball up and saying... For heaven's sake, hold the ball, get full value for the set to six. Both sides making uncharacteristic errors. Could go forward by Robbie Kearns. Takes it outside his own 30. How? Showing it, then running himself. Brooker makes the tackle. Lazarus charges over halfway. Just what they needed, Melbourne. They have been under some pressure. They needed just a good set of six, and they've got it. And Richard Swain kicks out of dummy half and will go into the in goal. And that is taken over the dead ball line. Good work by Brett Hodgson. That was, 
Excellent work by Hodgson, put his foot over the touch in goal line and then took the ball dead, which means that Melbourne are the team that are deemed to have put it dead. Clever work here of all the kids watching this. Brett Hodgson puts his foot out, there it is. So therefore, it's a 20 metre tap. Well done, Brett Hodgson. Fuller, on his own 30. Dale Bonner. To Barry Davis. The West winger. Chipping and regaining Barry Davis. Oh. Yeah. Well, you've got to say he's confident if nothing oh. else. Had that not come off, Tommy Rodonikas oh. would have been having heart palpitations, but he backed his own judgment and came off, but not a thing you want to do every day of the week, Steve Waterman. Oh, Tommy Rodonikas, he almost would have probably cut him straight there, but enterprising play, but not in your own half. Lucky to get away with it, I tell you. John Scandalis now back from the sin bin. So the Magpies are back to the full complement and it hasn't cost them any points on the board. Dinover kicking over the top of the line for Hodgson to chase. That was knocked down by Melbourne, but the referee rules it was knocked back and Marcus Vai picks it up. That'll be an interesting one to look at. The West players certainly thought that there was a knock on there by Melbourne, but that's not the way that referee Sean Hampstead saw it. Marquette, oh, lovely pass to Kamali, straight into open spaces. What a gem of a pass for Marquette. Finished off by Kamali. Kamali will be the player to go in the record book, but you can put that down to Paul Marquette. That was just a piece of Melbourne Storm brilliance. Yes, uh, really against the flow of play, like both sides making a lot of mistake, but Brett Kamali finished off with a great try there. Western Suburbs thought, did the wrong option on that fifth and last tackle, little grubby, should have put the ball further down for field position. Was this a knock on? Well, I think it was. I think that was definitely knocked on by Melbourne. The ball travelled towards the Western Suburbs try line first. The West players complained. I think they had every reason to do so. That was a knock on for sure and for certain. And the storm of court, the, the Magpies at sixes and sevens. Nice run there by Bye. There he is, Marquette. There's a little gap. Kamali puts himself to it, and he's pretty fast. The fullback was up, so no one at home. And, of course, where's the, the best place to score the try is right under the post. Brett Kamali with a try that really puts Melbourne, and this will be two converted tries in front. You'd think they're going to be impossible to catch from there. And maybe the luck in that try has really gone against the Magpies. Matt Geyer converts from in front. So 18-6 it is in favour of Melbourne. Let's have a look at this incident again. Again, the wrong option. Little grubby should have been putting the ball further now, down. Scott Hill yeah, definitely knocks the yeah. ball back towards the uh, the Magpies line. Should have been a knock-on for sure. Knock-on for mine there. By though, he runs the ball a good 20 metres. And here's Marquette. Looks, there's uh, Kamali. Puts himself through the gap. And there's no one at home. And there's no better place to score the try than right under that black dot. Turvey, and there's a case of another little man doing it to a big man. Yep. Well, a real double whammy, you'd have to say, for the Magpies. They should have had a knock on and got possession. But give Melbourne their credit. Melbourne have played with the whistle and played it brilliantly. And this man, Paul Marquette, with a gem of a pass to put Kamali underneath the post. Now Robbie Kearns gets out to his own 20. Nickow getting a roll on Melbourne. On the 30 metre mark. Now to Rodney Howe, right on the advantage line. To Swain and then to Ross and then to Hill and away to Marquette and back inside to Robbie Ross and Swain's with him. Lovely pass to Swain. Back inside to Kearney. Kearney throws the pass to Dyer. He can't take it. It'll come up with a Magpies ball and Hodgson has the pill 15 up from his own line. Well, some enterprising play there by the Melbourne Storm, but they don't need to throw the ball around in Gaya Ben, and they should have held the ball. They had about four or five sets of ta uh, uh, tackles left up their sleeve. They couldn't have scored, but Western Suburbs Magpies, they're off the hook. Can the Maggies turn it round? McGuinness, the player who scored the intercept try for the Magpies in the first half. Harvey Hard, this time can't unload. Scott Hill over the top with a smothering tackle to ensure the Englishman couldn't get the pass away. Ten on their own side of halfway. George Arliss got it at the second attempt. Fuller pushes it away to Brooker. The Magpie's standing flat now. No one's taking the ball up hard. They're looking for someone else to do it. Hopefully a good kick will get them right down the other end of the field and put some pressure on the Melbourne Storm. Scandalous. One of the rare times that he's been forced to kick. 
kicks it straight to Robbie Ross. Now Tony Martin in that distinctive orange and black headgear feeds it away to Marcus by by inside to Robbie Ross. Ross looking for support back on the outside. Couldn't get the pass away to Martin. <laughs> 21 metres out where Howe plays it. Kamali away to Marquette again. Swain works on the short side to Kamali. Wide away to Matt Geyer. Geyer will go in for the hat trick. Try number three to Matt Geyer. Gaia scores the simplest of tries, makes it 22 points to six with a kick to come. And let's just hope that this doesn't become an absolute avalanche for Melbourne because Wests, for the, uh, the courage they've shown in this game, don't deserve to be on the end of an absolute hiding. But at the moment, that's the way it may be shaping. Well, I really feel for the Magpies at the moment. Melbourne Storm, they are a class outfit. They've shown their patience. They've waited for the opportunities. And here we see the replay. Brett Kamali, he's got a good pass. Lucky to not lose that ball, Marquette. But you'll see a, um, a play the ball here. Brett Kamali will have the ball. Him and Gaia must be roommates. They came over here yesterday and both got it on a string. There's Gaia. Plenty of space in front of him. A lovely pass. Yeah, lovely pass. Gaia running into the gap, and the pass came right to him so that there was this yawning gap as wide as Sydney heads for Matt Gaia to go in and score his third try of the day and his ninth for the season. And he's the goal kicker as well. It's pretty much the Matt Gaia show as far as Melbourne's concerned today. Successful by Matt Geyer. Geyer scoring off the pass that came his way from uh, from Brett Kamali. Kamali, his seventh try assist for this season. Yeah, just a case of him getting on the outside of his man. Throws the dummy there, but Geyer gone on the outside of Justin Brooker, and that was the key to the, the try. Russell, how can the Maggies get back into this game first? I think they've got to slow that play the ball down to stop Melbourne Storm getting that roll on. Well, I think they've got to take, take a look at the Storms, but the Storm are holding the, the Maggies down every every time they play the ball. That's what they've got to do. They've got to congest their defensive line-up so that they take the first four or five tackles, which the Storm normally hit up the middle. They've got to concentrate on their defensive. Then they go wide. They've got to have their blind winger covering. That's not what's happening. They're getting more than one pass away, and the, once the Storm get behind the advantage line, masses of runners, they can pick anyone they like. Rodney Howe just on the halfway mark. Kamali kicking as we look at the, the West stats and their hooker, Cherry Mesher, leading the tackle count. Good effort by uh, by Mesher, 23 tackles he's racked up so far. Tell what a couple of tries have done for the Melbourne Storm. Brett Kamali, a lovely place kick there, but there are four or five defenders chasing and putting the pressure right back on the Magpies. But looking at this, John, it's getting quite dark here and there, there aren't really uh, that many uh, uh, lights out here to sort of keep the, the brightness over the field. And about not many lights, Steve, you can make that zero lights. <laughs> I hope you've got good eyes. <laughs> well, that'll work in the Maggie's favour. They've got the dark jumpers on. There'll be, no, there'll be no trouble in seeing the, uh, the storm. <laughs> Cherry Mesher getting to a few metres from halfway. Leo Dinova kicking. That might be the tactic that West have to come up with. Try and fake a few injuries and hope that it gets absolutely dark. <laughs> They can put on a few quick tries at the end when no one can see them. Yeah, I think that's one of their keys too. I think Leo Denver has got to do the kicking. Scandalous did one, put it straight down the throat of Robbie Ross. When when Leo Denver kicks, he makes the defensive team chase, and that gets his kicking team where he chases up there. And they've uh, what's well, the third tackle now? And they're just out of the 22. Marcus By on his own 30 plays it, and then comes a penalty. Coming up inside the 10, just too quickly. Okay. Is the Western Suburbs Magpie trying to smuggle one of our girls home with him? Good kick two by Scott Hill. The breeze getting behind that kick coming across from the east. And that was again about 30 metres from that kick from Scott Hill. Then the quick tap. The penalty count, which so heavily favours Melbourne. 
Kearns, almost up to the 20 to play. Kamali, again to Nickow. Then away to Stephen Kearney. Kearney gets to Hodgson. Oh, great tackle. Little man on big man and Hodgson pulled him to ground. Well done. Robbie Ross, away to Hill. They've got men over on the outside. McGuinness comes up to make a smothering tackle on Hill. Well, they're certainly hanging in, the Magpies. You've got to give them that. Push back by Robbie Ross. No knock on. Back it comes. Away to Bowden. Then it goes away to Kamali. Kamali looking to link up with Nikau. Can't get his pass away, Kamali, and he'll play. Great scrambling defence there by the Magpies. Last coming up for Melbourne. Scott Hill goes to the air. Gaia coming through after it. The ball bouncing. Gaia could get number four. No, he waited to go to Aaron Mill and he'll score. Well, Matt Gaia had the chance to score four. The bounce this time didn't favour him, and Aaron Moore, Johnny on the spot to score the try. Yes, everything going the storm way. Uh, yeah, yes, Ham said the referee has called for the video referee, but I think the ball was knocked back. If that's what he's worried about, it looks like a fair try for mine, but time will tell, John. John Gosher, the video referee, looking at it. Well, that's a lovely place kick to, nice and high, so that your team men can compete for the ball. Yeah, knocked backwards, no doubt, straight into the clutches of Aaron Moore. Fair try. And that will no doubt get the green light from John Gosher. Aaron Moore getting a pat on the back for his trouble. Green, that means go. Or four points, rather. I think you can see when you see those green lights flashing, I think it gives an indication of just how dark it is starting to get here in, in Perth at Lath Lane Park. Third try of the year for the Melbourne Storm from Bombs. And that was a beautifully paced bomb by, uh, by Scott Hill. Their bombs have been absolutely pinpoint, as was the one earlier in the first half for Matt Guyer to score when he got above Jared Mills. Yeah, just probably a little criticism there on Jared Mills too, the number two there for the Magpies, trying to knock the ball away. It would have been better to catch the ball and as it backfired on him. So Gaia having scored three tries and four goals already, so he's got up, uh, what's that, 20 points so far for the day. And it will stay at 20 as this kick goes across the face of goal. 20 minutes remaining in the second half. The scoreline, Melbourne Storm 28, Western Suburbs 6. The best part about this kick was it went nice and high, got the chase a chance to get right underneath this. Unfortunately for Jared Mills, he just completely mistimed it. And there he was just floating, Aaron Moore. Beautiful kick that by Scott Hill. Absolutely to perfection, that kick. Russell, you've played for New South Wales at fullback and uh, the Melbourne Storm haven't played that great today, although they are leading convincingly against the Magpies. Robbie Ross, what do you think his chances are for perhaps a state of origin berth for the Blues? Well, when your side's travelling well, you come into contention. Robbie Ross has done uh, nothing to harm his chances here today, but gee, I think Peachy might be just a bit in front of him. But Robbie Ross, don't discard him. He certainly is a state of origin chance for New South Wales. Robbie Kearns. Ten on his own side of halfway. Swain to Nickow. Stephen Kearney. Back to Swain. Just starting to find some holes now as the West's defence starts to wilt. Pushed wide on the last. Mills drives on it as he's caught by Matt Guy. Well, I think the Magpies are now have got to throw the ball around a bit. They've really sort of got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Quick play the balls and play a little bit of enterprising rugby league like we actually saw them do in the first half. I think they're very tired, the, uh, the West Magpies. They're just walking at the moment. No one really wanting to run on with that ball. And I think just the what it takes out of the, the petrol tank trying to stop the, the big, strong Melbourne forwards coming at you just constantly through the game. It has to have an effect somewhere, and it's now starting to show. Well, they've given a great effort, uh, the Magpies, but they are outclassed by a, a truly a, a better there. side. We we'll see a knock on there. By John Scandalis. But look at the Melbourne Storm, John, they're, they're interchanged. Danny Williams, oh, Stephen Kearney, Russell Bowne and Matt Rua. Like, oh, they're oh, big. They, they can throw the ball. They, they can run. They're hard. They're just a wonderful side. Tremendous interchange. Got bench. great talent, terrific strength, wonderful depth, excellent rugby league side, and brilliantly coached. Back to Matt Geyer. 
Gaia with Mool on his outside. Decides to run himself again, Matt Gaia. He's back inside the 20 of the Magpies. And West's slow to regroup in defence. To Bowden. Then to Swain. Hill switching on the inside, through Kerning and then away to Robbie Ross. Ross will go away and score right next to the post. They're out on their feet, Western Suburbs. There were holes all over the paddock. It was just a matter of which one big Stephen Kearney wanted to run into. And Robbie Ross, like the drover's dog, just trailed right off his hip. He said to, uh, to Steve Kearney, you pick the gap and I'll be right there, whichever one you run for. Well, it's a case of the, a good big man being a good little man. Don't tell me that wasn't a pre-rehearsed move, too. You can see that, that, that here we are from dummy half. We see Scotty Hill inside. Kearney looks over on his left straight away, and Robbie Ross, he just picks up the crumbs every time, doesn't he? Yeah, wonderful player, Robbie Ross. A definite set play, that one. Kearns, a delightful pass. And we spoke about Robbie Ross, and it may be a state of origin chance, but... That'll certainly help his case. Yeah, wonderful player. A product, of course, of uh, the Newcastle area. He's with the Knights. Then, when the, the war broke out, he had a season with the Brisbane Broncos. Went back to the Hunter Mariners when they were allowed to play. Then, of course, they folded. And what a blessing for a new side, Melbourne, when they were able to, to pick up some of the wonderful players from the Hunter Mariners, like Kamali and Hill and this kid, Robbie Ross. Just the basis of an excellent football side. The West players, what do you say? Well, their heads are down. They realise this game is gone and they're now just playing for pride. As Matt Geyer converts, and he certainly is enjoying coming back to Perth, Matt Geyer. He'd come and play at Lathlane Park any day of the week, wouldn't he? There we see. There's the pass. Kearns, it's just a super loop. And you don't see many of that pass patterns these days where Robbie Ross ran a little short one off his hip. No one touched him. And that is superb play. Short kickoff taken by Wests. It went just the 10 metres. But Melbourne are able to come up with it. Danny Williams. Whilst it hasn't been Melbourne Storm in one of their greater games, and they've made a lot of mistakes in the first half, in the first 15 minutes of the second half, they have shown patience, they have shown tolerance, and they've just waited for the opportunity. And Brett Kamali has been able to give them opportunities through his boot and also his hand. This pass knocked down by, by Wests, and Kevin McGuinness gave himself up. <laughs> the moment he got it, he looked around to the referee West to feed. say, you're going to blow your whistle. West feed. Western Suburbs feed. Double knock on. So a knock on both ways rules the referee. And for that reason, the first knock on coming Melbourne's way, then knocked on by Wests. So West get the feed. Yeah, it hasn't been one of Melbourne's best performances, but in saying that, Steve Mortimer, you probably have to think back to that game as we see a penalty go the Magpies' way. The game last week for Melbourne against Brisbane at Olympic Park, it was a very tough, hard physical game. And maybe they're still just feeling the effects of, of that game a little bit. And it's hard to build yourself up for, uh, for games every week and be at your best. Yes, you're right, John. Here we are seeing a couple of catch-up penalties now by Sean Hermstead for the Mag boys. But you are right. But I do also think there probably was a little bit of complacency coming into this game. And that certainly was knocked out of them at half-time with a scoreline of only six points to the difference. So Tom Rodonigas Magpies have done exceptionally well, but they just lack the depth and that thing called size, that word called size. Ball to be played by Amon, only a couple of metres out from the line. Now away to Dinova, then on to Bonner. Bonner 11 metres out, being driven back. Brett Hodgson just down in, in back play for, uh, for Wests. Ball dropped by Justin Brooker. Storm come up with it. Melbourne ball. Well, it'll be a shame if they lose Brett Hodgson because he has been such a good player in a beaten side. He's done everything. So a couple of great tackles and he's, he's, uh, his attack has been all, also excellent, chiming into the back line at, at certain times during the game. Travis Baker on the field for West. His first appearance, he's wearing the 16 jersey. Interesting stat as far as the Melbourne Storm is concerned. Pretty much the same thing could well happen here today as Kearney gets that ball away to Martin. Looking for one more runner coming off him. 
couldn't get it away. Dived on by a moan. You know, John, it is an interesting step. Like, have a look at the, Glenn Lazarus. You're, you're at the last 15 minutes of play, and you've got someone like Glenn Lazarus when you're really tired, he's running at you all the time. It's a, it's a hard job to stop the man, isn't it? A big fellow like him. I'll tell you what, that is a scary step because the last time these two sides met, 54 points to 16, the Storm defeated the Magpie. They now lead 34-6. They could be in for another half century if they score most of their points in the last 20 minutes. Barry Davis dodging and weaving in centre field. He's just near halfway where he'll play the ball for the Magpies. Cherry Mesher. Travis Baker runs in to be the dummy half. Dinova. Stopped in a good tackle by Matt Brewer. Fuller runs from dummy half, has Georgialis trailing with him. The moment he got the ball, though, it was well read by Stephen Kearney. Last coming up for Wests. Dinova's kick. Robbie Ross waiting for it. Swain will go to it first. Swain knocked to ground by Baker. Great take there by Rich, uh, Richard Swain. He also had a couple of Melbourne Storm players around him. Matt Geyer. Geyer almost through again. He'll have a second attempt at Geyer. Now away to Marcus Bai. Bai had Martin on the outside of him, elected to run himself. Kamali. Gets his pass away to Danny Williams. Heading back into centre field. Ten inside West half. Williams is tackled. Lazarus. <laughs> the, the big fella. The ball's called a lasso. He's standing there for a rest. What, what are you doing at the meat why, for? Why the ball? You're kidding, boys. <laughs> Stephen Kearney. Again, lovely offload. Back inside again to Robbie Ross. Creating habit now, the big fella. The New Zealand test captain, when he's available, not out suspended, he's the test captain. And he is running riot, big Stephen Kearney, and almost impossible to put onto the ground. And Robbie Ross says, wherever you go, I'm going to be somewhere close by. Oh, look, he's good at picking up the, the crumbs or, you know, backing up. He's a great support player. But Glenn Lazarus is going to claim that try. Standing flat, took the ball up, picked by the ball. But a nice little step there, too, offloading the ball. Brett Kamali, look at this well-timed pass. Pass the right time, and Robbie Ross... Look, he's, he's got to be a chance, I reckon, for the state of origin side. He's, he's in fine form. Well, there it was. Stephen Kearney got behind the first offensive pivot. And then came Kamali. Kamali just sized up, drew the player. And this is what football's all about, making the ball do the work. Robbie Ross gets his double. You know, Russell, that's why Chris Anderson bought um, Stephen Kearney, because he can offload that ball after a quick play of the ball. He's absolutely mag magnificent. One or two out. He pulls two guys in, offloads the ball, and you've got men like Brett Kamali and Robbie Ross to finish it. Comes into his own when the opposition does start to tire a little. They don't come up as quickly on him. Gives him a little bit of space to move, and he, he is just such a class player, Stephen Kearney. Wouldn't you love to have him coming off your reserve bench? There'd be 16 other sides in the competition that love to be in the position that Melbourne are to have, uh, have Kearney on their interchange bench. Again from in front by Matt Geyer. And the Melbourne Storm hit the 40 with still 10 minutes remaining. 40 points to 6 it is in favour of Melbourne. I have to tell you that those pictures that you are seeing do lie somewhat as far as the uh, the light conditions are here. But the only thing you can really see with natural light is the hot dog stand, which stands out like an oasis in the Sahara on the other side of the field. But it is very dark conditions for, uh, for spectators here at the ground at Lack Lane Park, but there aren't any floodlights for them to turn on. Now to Marquette. John, I've got to give the Perth crowd a bit of a wrap here too. I, I think there probably is maybe 6,000 people, particularly on our side where we're coming. Here we Scott are. Scott Hill. Try Hill time. getting into open spaces. He comes up to with the last line of defence and then switches his pass back on the inside. And Russell Bowden, who just loves scoring tries. He'll get up and give one to the crowd, I'm sure. Russell Bowden, will he? <laughs> he never misses. <laughs> Absolutely love scoring tries and scores plenty of them, Russell Bowden. Good break by Scott Hill and Barry Davis, all he could see coming at him. Plenty of, plenty of numbers out there. Jerseys. Have plenty, a look at them. Plenty of numbers out there, like there's 
Four six. of them on the outside, so two back on the inside, and one magpie, Barry Davis, to stop the loss. Yeah, six storm there to about three magpies. Uh, great ball there by Brett, Brett Kamali again. Quick play the ball again. Scotty Hill doing some wonderful things too. He's really sort of been a great link between both the forwards and the backs, partnering crime with Brett Kamali. And, well, Bowden's going, going to be saying that he ran the whole length of the field to score that try to all his grandkids one day. <laughs> <laughs> Russell Bowden comes from, originally from, uh, from Mount Isa. As do it. A couple of... Uh, Fairly good sportsman named Greg Norman and Pat Rafter, and Russell Bowden will say, well, I'm another one. Just a product of the ISA. Makes it easy again for Matt Geyer from in front. <laughs> 46 points to six in favour of the Melbourne Storm. And the tenth try that Melbourne have scored this season, starting in their own half. Well, Western Suburbs defensive line stopped two passes wide, and that's when Scotty Hill got himself through. I thought that pass to Borden could have almost been a forward, and why didn't McGuinness leave the ground to make the tackle? Too late, Borden gets his one for the day. So the restart as it comes back to Richard Swain. As I was so rudely interrupted there, John, when the Melbourne Storm scored a try, you've got to take your hats off for the Perth crowd today. There's about 6,000 people. I could be wrong, could be a little bit more or a little bit less, but they sort of have forgiven that we've taken a side out of Perth, and there certainly is opportunity, I think, long term, long term for a team to come back into Perth and to truly make it a National Rugby League competition. Good hit by the Magpies, and they'll come up with the ball as well. So a few metres inside Melbourne's half. Matt Geyer has so far brought up 26 points today for the Melbourne Storm. That's a club record that beat the, uh, the previous record, which was set by Craig Smith last season. And Mo, trying to give the pass to Barry Davis to put him through a gap, couldn't do so, Kamali comes up with it. Scott Hill, shed away from the tackle of Travis Baker. Gets out to his own 30. Now to Matt Rua. Well, Matt. Michael Brabeck just launched himself at Rua, unfortunately missed him. Well, that says it all, doesn't it? The most in the NRL. You know, Chris Anderson's forwards give them the platform for success out, out wide. Their backs have scored most of those tries, and that put it down to the forwards. The interchange bench, they get over that advantage line, they give their halves opportunities to do creative things around the ruck and also to shoot it out wide, out wide to the likes of Aaron Mool and Tony Martin in scoring tries. Dinova working this scrum and kicked on the first by George Alice for Barry Davis to chase. By going back into his own in goal, gets around Davis and back into the field of play, and George Alice makes the tackle, but he still unloads to Rodney Howe. Trying to drive Howe back towards the in goal. Can't do so. Kamali. Taking the settler from dummy half to Marquette and then to Martin. Martin coming down towards Barry Davis. Gets away from Davis and Fuller. He's still running and then picks up Scott Hill. Back on the inside to Matt Dyer. This is the Matt Dyer show. 26 points. He had scored up until now. Make that 30 for Matt Dyer. What a return to Perth this is for Matt Dyer. That is his fourth try of the day. And he brings up 30 points on his own behalf as the storm hit the half century. Well, the Magpies are truly um, flagging now. They had to try that. They were hiding to nothing. But the Melbourne Storm, they turned something, a negative, into a positive. They are a class outfit. Chris Sanders has brought all these players together from all over um, different clubs around Australia. Some of them from the Perth Reds, some of them from the formerly from the Hunter Mariners. He's put them into a good team. But here it is, right from their own line, promoting the ball. Put this try perhaps down to Mill. He looked inside for his players, able to break the tackle. Robbie Ross trips over. He wants another try, but Scotty Hill says, no, I'll take it. And that guy says, I'll have it, thank you very much. Matt Spence was the only player with a chance to get him, and he collided with the referee, Sean Amstead. Magpies there. What do you do? They, they, they lack 
they lack size, they lack strength, they certainly don't lack, lack in heart. They really have just been outclassed by a superior side. In an abacus to count up how many points he's got, <laughs> Matt Guy. That's 30. This will make it 32 for the day. The Magpie has put up his arms to surrender. It's Matt Geyer 32, Melbourne 52, the Magpie 6. So you're going to put this try down, I think, Chris Anderson. He's going to introduce a philosophy into this time, this team, an attacking philosophy. They look for every opportunity, and here it is. They refuse to let the ball die. Scotty Hill comes on, and you wouldn't believe it. Well, you would believe it. There'd be another man there to take the pass. Geyer gets number four. He won't forget this day in a hurry. So the restart by Melbourne and Danny Williams driving it back inside Magpie territory. <laughs> Their biggest win was 52 to 6 in against uh, Souths. And the scoreline at the moment is exactly that, 52 to 6 against the Magpies. So are we going to see history, John McCoy? I think the way they're playing, it won't be that far Gaia. off. Gaia, Gaia looking for number five, loses the ball. That went forward, play on, says the referee, back to Robbie Ross. Ross puts the ball down. And the referee will go to the video referee, John Gosher, just to check. And just see where it come off a West End. He just wants to see whether that ball was in fact put knocked down by Wests. If it was, it's a try. We'll see it here. He offload the ball. Guy, this is where Gaia. He's got the ball. Now, does it come off a West player's hand? I don't think so. Another wrangle might be able to tell it. Well, it would only be the front-on angle that is going to tell us whether or not it was a West hand that propelled that ball forward. The mine was a knock-on, John. Here we are, we'll see it here. Oh, I still think the ball went forward. What do you think? I think that's a knock-on. Yeah. However, John Gosher decides it wasn't. That it was touched, in fact, by Wests. And a fair try to Robbie Ross. Have a look at that bench. Lazarus. Good, <laughs> Nickel Kearns. Unbelievable. Again, it's a case of the Storm just looking to move the football. They're a treat to watch. I think it was knocked down by the Western Suburbs hand. That's how to read tomorrow. And Robbie Ross gets a treble. Yeah, it's all academic. The, uh, the referee and the video referee ruling that John Scandalis got a hand in here, just there, and not, in fact knocked the ball forward, Scandalis, allowing Robbie Ross to pick it up and scamper over in the corner for another try. Makes it 56-6. to six. And Matt Geyer in the dark from near the touchline in an attempt to convert. Their jerseys, they're glowing. I think the... Probably the unfortunate part, and like Melbourne were going to win anyway and win comfortably, there was no doubt they've just got too much class. They're a wonderful football side. The unfortunate part was the try that broke the camel's back, as far as Wests will break the Magpies back, more to the yep. point, definitely came from a knock on. That when when the Magpies were attacking, had they been able to get back to 12 all, but there was a knock on by Wests, undetected by the referee, as Matt Guy's kick is short, and that runaway try, which came from a knock-on by uh, by Melbourne, and then they ran the length of the field to score, and that really put them out of reach. And from then, you could see the West's head, West's heads just start to work. I think you're spot on. And rugby league is not just about physical ability, but also mental ability. And that really was the straw that broke the Magpies' back, so to speak. But they've kept trying, but they truly have been outclassed by a better side. Russell, I want to ask ask you this: Is that the Melbourne Storm? Do you think they can go all the way this year? Oh, oh, there's no doubt about it. They'll be in the competition at the end of the, at the, end of the year, the playoffs. They will be there. you just got to get there. Other teams can win it. I think they have a wonderful mix. I think they're strong and tough up front with some class backs that, well, they don't outweigh the, the side. They're a, they're a well-balanced side. Here they go again. They're this well, ball being lost by Richard Swain and over the touchline. Yeah, they're a well-balanced side. I like them because they're a tough forward pack and they've got plenty of good interchange forwards, so they're not going to lose up front. And you and I know, I think everyone that's followed football knows that big matches are won by the men up front. They certainly have the ammo to do that. Well, the reason I say that, Chris Anderson last year said we want to be competitive. We are looking in the top ten. They got there and, and Brisbane absolutely got rid of them. Now, there's no Brisbane there this year and they're playing better. 
you know, what team can beat the Melbourne Storm the way they're playing? Well, they are the Brisbane of 1999, aren't they? They are the, the benchmark for most of these sides. Well, they had the experience last year. It was a wonderful first up year for them. And now they've strengthened. When you get the likes of Stephen Kearney added to your side, they're just such a class outfit, an excellent coach, and believe in their own ability. Here's Kevin McGuinness, tackled just on halfway. As we come to the last minute of this game in Perth, Travis Baker giving it away to Dinovac. Leo Dinova. Now back to Fuller. Then away to Spence. Fuller just pops the pass across to Scandalis. It was touched by Travis Baker, came straight back into the clutches of Rodney Howe. Howe kicks ahead. The chase being led by Danny Williams and Tony Martin. Martin touches it down. Oh, great work, Tony Martin. I think that's a try. He thinks so too. It looked that that ball was for sure and for certain going over the dead ball line. And a brilliant finish by Tony Martin to score the try. He's an unsung hero of this side, Tony Martin player who comes originally from Gladstone in Queensland, had a stint with the London Broncos, and he really is an unsung hero of the Melbourne Storm, and that is a try, and an excellent try, Tony Martin. Great skill. Well, that was a great try. A kick is only as good as its chase. We saw Martin score the try there, but you know what, John McCoy, Rod Howe, he's going to take all the accolades of that. It was my try, not Martin's. A little bit of skill there by the by the front row forward right there. Yeah, it was. He had a couple of players in support on the inside. I think he realised, well, this is probably one of my few chance chances to put in a little chip, kick and chase. And it worked to perfection. Again, turnover in possession to the Magpies. Offloading the ball. Really just at sixes and sevens at the moment they are. There he is. Now look at the skills for this front row forward. Skills of a halfback. There you are. Take that, boys. He's put the bounce back so it'll stay there but Tony Martin's made it all. <laughs> yeah wonderful work Tony Martin to finish off that try and again scores it underneath the post. The poor old Maggie is gone. He's had enough. <laughs> Gaia converts. Probably a fitting note that Matthew Gaia puts on the last points of the game because he's just had a wow of a game. Four tries to him. And 62 to six, Melbourne have thrashed the Western Suburbs Magpies. It was 12-6 at half time, but the second half really belonged to a wonderful, wonderful football side, the Melbourne Storm. The Magpie dejected but he knows that his side, certainly for the first half, gave their all, but they were outclassed by the Premiership front runners, you would think, along with Sydney City. And there it is, the full-time score. Melbourne have defeated Western Suburbs here in Perth by 62 points to six.